Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to be making a shooting board with all the bells and whistles. This thing will be able to do donkey ears, it'll be able to do miters, it's got all sorts of settings for different boxes, it's got everything. But James, James, do you really expect a new woodworker to be able to build that thing? I mean, it's got more unnecessary stuff on it than a Chippendale high boy. Oh yeah, did I mention uh, Rex is going to be joining us today because he's going to be making one that's a little bit simpler but has some other implementations that I really like. So uh, let's actually build these side by side and uh, see what we get. Let's dive in. Yes, let's make this thing. I've been wanting to make this shooting board for a long time. We're going to be starting with a kit from Veritas for both the angle and the shoot. And of course we're going to be making this out of plywood because plywood's is stable. Hold on. Are you using plywood? Of course, plywood really is the best choice for the situation. That is an utterly unacceptable choice. A good jig is made... Oh, wait a second. I use plywood too. Yeah, um, honestly, plywood is one of the best choices for this. It stays stable, it keeps its shape nicely, uh, it, it works perfectly flat, and it's, it's just an all-around good wood when you want something to be flat and true. Uh, the big thing you have to think about is you are always working in a cross-grain so, uh, situation. No matter which direction you go on plywood, you're always going to be cutting across the grain. So you're going to be wanting to use a cross-cut saw, you're going to be wanting to use a low-angle plane, uh, it's just one of those things where you, you're not going to be able to treat it like you would ripping larger pieces of lumber. Now, I'm, I'm going to start with the base being a three-quarter inch piece, but on top of that, I want to raise up the main working surface another half inch. Uh, if I had the Veritas shooting board plane, the half inch would be perfect, but I'm actually going to have to take a little bit out of the three-quarter piece to actually lower the bed down a hair. Um, so we'll actually cover that here in a moment. But once we get these cut to size, then we can uh, fit in how much do I want actually taken off for this slide. This is a, a, um, a slide that you can get from Veritas that is designed for their shooting board plane, but I'll show you later how to modify it to fit uh, the, the low angle plane that I use. So we're going to cut off a piece for that to then fit on the end, and these two then need to be attached together. Now, usually the initial mindset is, let's throw some glue at it, but for this, I'm actually going to be putting the whole thing together with screws. Uh, there's only glue used in, uh, well, two places, uh, but almost all the, well, all the wood-to-wood -wood connection is done with screws. And the reason being is I want some modification to it, and we're going to put enough screws so that it won't move. Um, I'm going to be putting one every six inches on square throughout this, um, and countersinking them down. I want to actually make sure I countersink them a little bit lower than normal. I want to keep the heads as low as possible. It also gives a place for dust to go so it doesn't catch on the head. A good countersink bit is a very hard thing to find. I have probably two dozen countersink bits and only one or two that are of any decent shape. Um, so it's one of those things, I, I don't have any new ones that I like, I, I have a lot of old ones that I like. Actually, I think I ended up putting these screws like four, foot on, uh, four inches on center. So we're going to lay it out, put in a whole pile of screws through the half inch down into the three quarter and turn this into one big piece of lumber. And you can see how it will all go in here. Making sure you pre-drill. Um, you might not have to do it as much with this pine board. It has an oak surface, but everything inside is also pine. Uh, you, you just run into issues with stripping it out. So it's usually better to pre-drill and get a good fit. Now we have that screwed in, we can flush it all up, go across it with the plane, and clean it all up, make it nice and pretty, chamfer the edges a little bit, get rid of any of the burrs that have been coming off. You can see I didn't spend too much time making sure it was absolutely perfect with my saw. Um, I could have um, scored everything and, and made sure I didn't have any burrs sticking out, but I said, eh, oh well, I'm just going to do it a little faster. <laughs> so this track needs to get screwed down, and of course, because, because it comes from Canada, it comes with Robertson screws. Very nice. Uh, but again, it was set up for the, uh, the Veritas shooting board plane, which is a little bit bigger than my low angle plane. So I needed to move this slide over a little bit because there's, a, there's another rail that goes inside the rail that will then pinch the iron in place and keep it from moving around. So we needed to tap and drill um, a couple new holes to move this over a little bit, make sure this go in all the way. So this will be able to slide back and forth, and if I do end up getting a bigger plane in the future, I can move it back over. 
you can see how it will fit my low angle jack on here. And I can just slide it up until it just touches the back of it. Now these are set screws that are supposed to keep this from moving back out, but because I moved it over, I needed to get longer ones. Um, so the ones I had were not quite long enough to reach it. They also come with this uh, skid tape that goes on there that lowers the friction. And so the plane slides incredibly well on this. It is, it, it's fantastic. There's almost no friction between the plane and the base. I want to make a catch that will go along the front edge that then goes into the vise. Uh, this will be what hooks the front of the bench, of course, the, the bench hook. So I have a, a scrap piece that's about three quarter by three quarter. Uh, actually, I think it was like three quarter by one inch. I want to plant it down nice and flat, make sure it all goes in. And then, um, just like everything else, we're going to use screws rather than gluing it in place. Make sure you pre-drill everything, especially with this oak. You don't want that splitting out being that close to the end. Just holding it down with the hold fast works really well pre-drill everything, countersink everything, and then you can put in the screws. And now you have an edge on the front that will then grab the front edge of your bench, um, or you can put into the vise and clamp it down in. That's the bench hook, because it hooks the bench. Isn't that nice? <laughs> okay, now we need to actually start into the hardware. There is a Veritas hardware kit for the angle on this. And for that, we are going to go by the plans, and it actually specifies exactly where to drill these holes. There are two holes you're gonna have to drill in. One of them, I believe, was like three quarter inch, and this one will get a large brass fit. And the other one is a little bit smaller, which will actually get a, a wood tap that'll go in there. We wanna make sure we drill it to the right depth, so I'm actually gonna use a depth finder here and set it to the height of this so that it is perfectly flush with the top. So we're gonna drill down until that is nice and flush, make sure it all fits in there, and then we are going to glue that in place. We'll do that in a minute. Here's the second one. This one will actually get a wood tap that goes in there and provide threads. And so I'm gonna use the uh, the turn screw to run it down in there. That one ran in really nicely. Very, very happy with how that set in. Now we can check and make sure that we're exactly where we should be. So you should be able to put a square on there, a square up to the bottom of this, and those holes should line up pretty close. We're going to epoxy in the first one uh, so that it holds onto the wood nicely. And uh, we're gonna load this up with epoxy and squeeze it down in there, making sure we have a good bond between them. This one doesn't screw down into the wood. It actually needs to be glued down in. Um, and I'm, I'm looking for a, a source where I need to get these. So I need to actually call Veritas because if I wanna make this again, this is the only thing I wouldn't be able to uh, reuse from the kit because it's glued into the surface. So we're gonna squeeze it down in, make sure we get out all the air, push it down in. We want it to be flush. We don't want it sticking up at all. It's gotta be down below the surface. Um, and it perfectly would be, would be just flush. So once the epoxy is set, we can come back in and plane off all of the excess. It's easy to take off the majority with a chisel and then come in and scrape it off. Uh, scraper is fantastic for removing epoxy. And yes, even if you hit the brass, it still will scrape that. Now there are four other screws that go into this and this will give me the adjustment. So if it's ever so slightly out of true, we can adjust it with these screws, loosen them a little bit, tap it over. As well as this plate that gives you micro adjustments so you can actually see um, percentages of a particular degree, so minutes. Ooh, I'm really, really impressed with the accuracy on this. It is an incredible um, system, very, very well thought through. There's a big bolt that then goes into that big set and now this is in place and we can check it for square, make sure that it is both square and 45 degrees. There are detents in this, so as you slide it along, it, it pops into set degrees if you have particular angles you're looking for, and then you can lock it down with a screw and it becomes incredibly solid. I'm, I'm just blown away by it. Now we need a wooden fence to lock onto this um, so that it comes all the way out to the, the shearing edge of the plane. I have a scrap that needs to be about two inches. So we're going to rip this off. Um, it was it, like uh, two and three quarters at one end going down almost two inches at the other end. And then I need to cut a little bit shorter because I don't want it hanging off the, uh, the end of the shooting board. So we're gonna cut it short and then rip it down. Why rip it down? Because I've got a big saw and I want to use it. So if you don't have a shooting board, this is how you plane it in. Just set the vise and plane it. Put it down the mark and you're good to go. <laughs> Speaking of the, the big ripping handsaw, this is um, one of those things that it's, it's kind of a required taste, uh, acquired taste. You, uh, you learn to like ripping big boards. Um, I cannot lie. <laughs> so let's, let's clean this off. We have uh, some saw marks to remove and we want to make sure it's nice and flush and uh, square on all sides. We want this to be true because this is what our wood will be going against. So we are going to plane it square and true on all sides. Then we're going to put in screws here. And here I made a mistake. I should have followed the plans. The plans lay out exactly where those screw holes should be. And I figured I knew a little bit better. Um, actually, I didn't read the plans at that point. And so I just put the holes in and I put them in the wrong place. Um, so I had to go back and adjust it and, uh, and make that work. 
So we're going to drill most of the way through until the tip of the auger brick starts to poke through. Turn it around and drill from the other direction. This will give us a nice clean hole-ish until something splinters off. Now we need to secure this to the uh, the kit piece and it comes with a set of screws. We want to make sure that they're nice and counter -sprung, sunk so that they're flush in the face. Need to do a little bit more than that. Um, yeah, so put those uh, put those in the right place. It'll make it easier for you. <laughs> Here I realize that I'm not cutting deep enough. Um, the plane is actually raised up a little bit and the blade needs to be a little bit below the surface. So I'm going to take out that sliding bed and I'm going to use my rabbit plane to then take down the surface just a little bit. Um, if I were using the Veritas shooting board, it would work. Uh, but for this one, I need to take a little bit more half inch. It isn't quite enough. But with this, uh, with this rabbit plane, it makes it very easy to come in and take off a little bit of material. I'm just taking off basically the top veneer, so less than a sixteenth of an inch to get the, the plane down so the iron is below the surface of the cutting board. Trim it off, make it nice and clean, and then we can put the slide back on. For the fence, we want to chamfer all the edges, make sure that they're clean, except for the one edge that goes up against the iron. We also want to have a chamfer running along the bottom front edge of this so that it has a place for dust to go. And then we can test it, make it sure, trim back the fence, and uh, take the whole thing for a test drive. Let's put a uh, one by six in here and see, oh yeah, that is happy, we have a working shooting board. And now we also want to make a, a stop to go in because this uh, the fence is a fairly long fence and I want to make it uh, solid all the way along the point rather than just where it's connecting. So we're going to cut in a three quarter inch hole and put in a three quarter inch dollow. And this is a little bit closer to the fence than it should be, but that way we can come back and plane it off and actually adjust this to exactly where we want it to be so I have a nice straight edge. Again, take it for a test drive, make sure that we are square on everything, and now we have a, a long fence that is a good support all the way along it, making a, a very, very true edge. Now we're going to move on to the donkey ears, but for the donkey ears, we need to cut three boards with a 45 running all the way along one end. And that's really what the donkey ears were designed to do. So we need to do the work that the donkey ears need to do in order to make them. Uh, that may seem daunting, but I'm going to take you through the steps. Number one, we're going to cut these boards longer than we need them to be. It's easier to cut the 45 and then trim off the other end. We're going to lay out the line all the way around with a, uh, with a square and a miter square. And then we're going to make one cut. That'll give us two boards. And then we need to lay out one more cut. Um, that will give us our, our third board. Now, you could do it with slats on the other side so you don't have to do the, the third cut, but eh, you're going to learn it. So then once we get it cut close to shape, then we're going to come in and just plane it back to the line. And don't go over the line, just go to the line and plane it until it's square and true. And that's really all you need to do. The donkey ears just makes it a little bit more easy so that you can just go at it and, and be done with it. Then you can plane up the other end and trim those up to precisely the length those need to be. And of course you have a shooting board, so now you can do that really easily. Now uh, we want to actually attach the bottom support into the back of the donkey ears. We're going to draw a line and pre-drill through. Again, we're using screws because if we want a little bit of adjustment, we can use that with screws. If you glue it in place, you end up having things move around and it's not quite as accurate. Pre-drill everything, run the screws through the back plate and into the bottom support, countersink them down so they're nice and flush. With the back attached to the bottom support, now we can attach the bed to both of those. And this means running screws through at an angle, which may be a little bit daunting, but uh, we'll cover that in a moment. Once those are close, then we can plane it off, trim, and flush, and make it smooth and happy. We can attach the bed on, line it up to where it should be, put a square on the back and to the front, put uh, some lines on showing where we want our screws to go through, and these we actually want to go through at a bit of an angle so that they don't um, they don't run out the, the, the bottom edge. So they're going to go um, through the bed and then into the, the back support and the, uh, the bottom support. Put in screws, flush them up, and we can take it for a test drive. The problem with it right now is there is no fence in the back and we want to make sure that everything is where it should be. Um, if this angle isn't exact, we can trim off the back leg or the front leg and adjust the angle that way and get it to exactly 45 degrees. Now we can smooth it off and trim it out, uh, but we're also going to need to put on a fence along the back side so that the board can register against that. Uh, this needs to be there, otherwise the board can twist and turn on you. So I'm going to do it out of some quarter inch um, oak. I probably should have used the half inch plywood that I have left over from cutting the base, but we decided to just go with this. So this can then get screwed down in place 
and uh, it will go on the edge and then hang over. So you can see how there's a fence that you can put the board up against. Again, we're going to pre-drill and put in screws, making sure not to split out the wood because this is thin and delicate. Um, yeah, and make sure you use oversized screws. It's very, very important to use oversized screws. <laughs> Now we want to attach this down to the board. We don't want it moving around. We don't want to be able to clamp it on. I want this to just be able to pop on and pop off and not worry about it. So we're actually going to drill quarter inch holes through the bed and down into the, the main bed. And I use a quarter inch brass rod to go in there. So about two inches long. And this will drive through the bed of the donkey ears and then down into the bed of the shooting board. And uh, this will give you a permanent location. We're going to glue it into the donkey ears. And so you have these brass pins coming out and they can then go into these two holes we're cutting into the shooting board. Make sure your hole goes all the way through so that you can clean it out. If any dust gets in there, you can push it out the bottom. We're going to epoxy it into the donkey ears so you can see how the pin will come out. Make sure you put a liberal amount of epoxy on there and scratch up the end of the, uh, the brass rod so it has something to grab onto. Epoxy it, put it in there, keep the brass rod a little bit below the surface, let the epoxy set up, and then you can come in and float and file them off. Make sure that you have a good, clean, flat bed. And that should be about it for the build. Now we can take it for the test drive and do some tweaking. You can see how this then pops into place, and it really goes in that easy. You just pull it in, put it out, and it, it's, it, it's in place. Um, you can put your board in there, and however long you need it to be, you can get a really nice, clean, true 45 degree because you're held up against the fronts in the back and it holds it at 45 degrees. You need another hand, just clamp it on the surface. It, um, I, was, I was very, very happy with how it came, except for I realized uh, with oak, I need to sharpen it. So <laughs> sharpen it up, and then we can get a really nice, clean edge on this. Very, very pleased with how easy this works. So anytime I need to make box 45s, I can throw them on there and, and be done with it. On for the finish, and of course this is wood by right, so we're using boiled linseed oil. This is my homemade boiled linseed oil. I have a video on how to make it if yourself. I'm going to put it on there and let it soak in. Yeah, even with plywood, it's actually a really good finish. It feels good in the hand. It's not a really protective finish, but this is a shop furniture. We don't need it really protective. We just want it on there. I'm going to let it soak in and add a little bit more as it needs it. Let it soak in until it's not soaking anymore, and then wipe off all the excess. Once all the excess has been taken off, I'm going to let it cure for just a little bit and then put on the paste wax. I have homemade paste wax that I sell, and this will lubricate the whole surface so that boards will slide around on it easily. It gives you a nice surface that feels good. And we can mount all of the hardware back on, screw it all together, and take this beast for a test drive. Um, yes, I'm, I'm really, really happy with this. It, it, it came out um, far better than I expected. I have a few things that I'd like to do to it and, and modify it that I think would make it a little bit better. Um, I've included those in the plans, so if you do buy plans, I have all those in there. But with these detents, it makes it really easily. You just pop it until it goes in, and you look at the side just to make sure it, it's right on that corner. Um, and yeah, just like that, it all works. Incredibly, incredibly happy. Um, <laughs> it's cool. Got bells and whistles, lots of other things, and it works. What more could you ask for? My evil plan is coming together. <laughs> so there you have it. A shooting board with all the bells and whistles. It can do anything you want. Uh, this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I, I built this one a while ago, much more simple and, and basic. It gets the job done. If you want to see it, I'll leave a link to that below. But let's, uh, let's take a look at what Rex made. Listen, man. I just think you have overthought this entire thing. Shooting boards are much more basic. You need one shooting board for doing right angles. You're going to use that most of the time. And then occasionally, when you're doing a miter, you need a dedicated shooting board just for miters. Maybe you need a donkey's ear for doing case miters. This whole thing with doing five or six different angles, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. How many times in your life have you made a seven-sided box? So yes, this has all sorts of craziness to it that really is a lot of stuff I'm probably never going to use, but it's fun, it's there, and when I need it, I've got it, and I can show it off. But if you want to do something a little bit simpler, definitely take a look at Rex's video. Let's actually see what he made. So, all kidding aside, I like James's build just fine. I've made one that's a little bit more basic, but I'm trying to take care of the major issues that you have in building a shooting board. Most shooting boards either have a fixed fence, which is really durable, but if it drifts out of square over time, it's really difficult to adjust. Or you might have an adjustable fence with hardware, and those are easy to true up, but as you're using the shooting board and it's getting knocked around a little bit, they can easily drift out of square. 
What I've done with this design is combine those two things. I have a fixed fence that might not be perfectly square, but it's really solidly attached, so it doesn't matter how much you knock it around. And then I've added an adjustable fence in front of that, and this one can be shimmed or trimmed and adjusted any way you need to, because it comes on and off, it slides back and forth, you can slide little pieces of paper behind it to get it exactly true, so this fence can always be made dead perfect, and it's backed up by a really solid fence that doesn't move no matter what. And for doing long boards, I've added this adjustable stop that you can slide out on your bench and it'll support any length board and it just comes on and off with magnets. Like that. <laughs> and I've added a grab hole here at the bottom so it's easy to pull this out of your bench, get it out, pull off your stop, get to work, and then put it back on again. So thanks for the fun build, Rex. This has been an absolute blast. We'll have to do this again sometime. Honestly, James, this was a lot of fun. We need to do more of these in the future. I always get a kick out of it. Also, on that note, I do have plans available for this, and Rex and I are going to be doing something where we're actually including each other's plans on each other's sites. So if you'd like to build this one or Rex's, you can buy those on my site or on Rex's site as well. So if you buy one on one side or the other, it comes with both. It's kind of a fun thing we'll be doing. I'll leave a link to that down below. Also, definitely take a look at Rex's channel. He is doing an amazing thing over there. Uh, we'll probably be doing a few more collabs in the future. The two of us kind of think fairly similar in a lot of topics. There are a few changes I think I would have made with this now that I put it together and played with it. Um, I've included those changes in the plans, uh, making it a little bit of different shape and size. But honestly, I, I really like how this came out and I'm looking forward to using this a lot more in the future. Maybe someday I'll actually get a dedicated shooting plane as opposed to using a low angle jack. Um, but it does work with that. I just had to make a few modifications for it. So with all that being said, I want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon, members here on this channel, everyone who is helping make this channel possible. I mean, I, we, we would not be here without you. Everyone scrolling over on the side is quite literally keeping the lights on and uh, keeping this channel going. So if you'd like to find out more about that, there's a link to Patreon down below, or you can click the join button on the channel and help out that way. So I think that'll about do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. <sighs> So if it's a shooting board, why don't people just call it a target?